All right, so welcome to Night Hacking Interviews at the Javaland Conference, and I'm joined by Rabia Grunsberger. Good morning. And we, this is actually your second appearance on the yes, Night Hacking is. Interview yes, stage. Yes. I think last time we were in... JFocus at Stockholm yeah. about uh, effective IDE usage. Yeah, Matthias runs a good conference. He actually was yes. the, um, the first conference I did interviews at, so okay, okay. he helped kick it off. Um, so we're going to chat about code review tips, which I think is the topic of your presentation here. Yes, it is. And you probably have something insightful to say about this. Um, yeah, I think the most important thing is uh, that you, if you want to start with code reviews, you can uh, start slowly. It's uh, most useful for the team to start slowly to get uh, used to the process. And uh, then you can probably extend it to doing having code reviews of all the tasks uh, which are necessary for the project. And um, you should really know that really every code review helps every mistake you find before the code goes to the customer really helps you and helps the team. So, so in your experience, do, um, do you more often do code reviews with online tools where you're passing reviews to other people or like in group sessions or how do you? Um, we are doing it uh, at our company. We wanted to use some uh, review tools, but yeah. they are all web-based and I don't really like that. I'd like to stay uh, <laughs> in my IDE where I can uh, do all the things I usually do, like find references or something. I can't do that on the web page. So uh, we tried to use these tools and uh, didn't work out fast. So now we are just using some task text in the IDE to do the reviews. Okay. It works out well. So just, um, is it an IDE plugin which you're using or? No, it's just an uh, IDE itself. So Eclipse and all the other IDEs offer these uh, task tags like to do and fix me. Okay. And we are just uh, putting the oh, number it. of the task behind it. So everybody so you're just knows. annotating in the code and then checking it yes, back in yes, when you're done with yes. the code reviews. Right, right, right. Cool. Okay. So first tip, start slow. Yes. Okay. S start slow. And um, yeah. Have a look if you really need to use a tool. If you like to start slow, you can probably just use your IDE instead of uh, buying an expensive tool. <laughs> really have to look if, if the tool fits into your process at all. Yeah, I mean, that probably makes more sense than trying to buy something and then it turns out that it's not useful and you've wasted money on a yes. potentially yes, expensive sure. And it's in your tool. tool. I mean, the team has to get used to the tool as well. And if you do it in your IDE, they are all already used to it. And um, the next thing is uh, it really pays out. So there have been uh, studies that you can uh, cut the cost of the project in half if you are doing code reviews compared to not doing code reviews because you find so many errors and it's so cheap to fix the errors before it's on the deployed on the customer side that yeah. it really pays out to do the code reviews. Yeah, no, I, I think they've done studies on the incremental cost of um, fixing bugs. Yes. And once it gets the customer's hand, it's much, much higher, but um, it's even worse once the original developer who wrote the code isn't around anymore. That's true, that's true. And uh, the real problem is if you have the, your code on the customer side and the customer finds the error, yeah. they can really get annoyed. And it usually means stress for the team if they call in and say there's a serious bug and you have to fix it fast. So it highest the stress level of the team as well if you don't find the errors before they're on the customer side. Cool. Do you think doing code reviews um, helps improve team communication? Um, yes, it does, because other developers which uh, do the code review already know about uh, how the code for a new feature looks like. And uh, so they are getting more involved and having more discussions about the new feature and from the code base. And they're learning from each other because uh, they can see how others would write it or they're getting, getting comments on their code and can improve their coding abilities. Cool. It's a really nice project. And for us, it really helps. So the customers are not calling anymore that often. We don't have the problem that after we release, uh, people get anxious like, oh, tomorrow uh, we have they the release and then everybody calls probably because we have errors in our issues. code base. Yes. How, how often do you deploy your, your product or ship to the customer? Uh, usually every two months right now. Uh, the customers really don't want it more often sometimes yeah. because it also sometimes means uh, that they have to adjust to new features. So we found uh, we have done it every month, but that was too often. Too often so. for the customer. Yes, yes. Um, but probably if you do it less frequently, then the, the incremental change is harder to 
um, test and manage for pushing out as well. If you're doing more frequent releases, then you're going to um, see well, issues. Well, we are doing the code reviews on a regular basis. So, for example, every day we are doing the code reviews. So the code base is always in good shape, I guess. <laughs> cool. Um, how do you guys handle like technical debt in the code, where things are getting need refactoring or haven't been worked on in a while? Um, if you see them uh, during code review, if you review a class which has uh, very old code in it and uh, you see something else, you just uh, open up a new task that uh, it needs some cleanup. Yeah. So that's uh, how as well. Our code base is seven years old. So some parts are really, really old and need some refactoring. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and sometimes you're even like, oh, this is still in it? <laughs> I didn't know about it. It cool. happens as well. Yeah, so any other tips for people who are trying to start out with code reviews um, to help them get um, be more effective at working with their team on it? Uh, yeah, you really should know that uh, there's a lot of developers which have a lot of experience, but experience doesn't mean that they produce good code quality. So if you have uh, very experienced developers on the team and nobody has ever looked at the code, it might be that the code is not of good quality. And if you start doing code reviews and uh, criticizing these people, uh, they can uh, really get into get a bad mood. Yes. So um, you really have to tell your team that finding the issues in the code is not about criticizing the people, it's about uh, improving the code base and finding the errors before they get uh, to the customer side. It's not like counting how many issues somebody produced during one year or something. It's just only for improving. Yeah, okay. So I think maybe a, a mistake some teams make is um, being too critical in code reviews sometimes. Yes, you really have to watch out. I mean, sometimes you can't help and uh, get a bit annoyed if uh, somebody does the same mistake over and over again, but you really have to watch your words and uh, try to be kind and always not only say this is wrong, but uh, tell them how to make it better. How to improve it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another important thing, if you reject a review very often for just one task, you should probably go and do some pair programming. Because, I mean, sometimes everybody knows that you're really trying to find a good solution and you just can't because your brain is blocked somehow. And then it's really better to, to go for pair programming so that you sit before the computer together and try to find a better solution. Cool. Which, um, which Java release are you? Uh, we are still on uh, Java 7, but I've, uh, the problem is that we're having a desktop application. So it's not a web application, it's a desktop okay. application. So our customers need to have uh, Java 8 installed before we can move to it. And I've just uh, written a mail informing everybody that uh, Java 7 is going to end of life, and they probably want to update to uh, Java 8. Uh, some can't because they have uh, other products which uh, still require Java 7. And, but the errors are trying to update, and if everybody is on Java 8, we can also move our code okay. base to Java so 8. The reason I'm asking is because I was wondering how um, like new language features or um, frameworks affect the code reviews when, you're, when mm -hmm. you introduce new things. I don't have any experience with that, but uh, I will definitely do some tutorial sessions before we start with Java 8, yeah. so people can learn about it. I mean, there's a lot of uh, tutorials around nowadays, learning about lambdas and learning how to use them. Really nice tutorials, which uh, some some puzzlers, which yeah, where you really have to think are hard, and I think it's a lot of fun to learn about it. We see how it turns out. Yeah. No. So, I think. Well, especially with lambdas, there's different ways of using them. So um, even inside Oracle, there's been discussions about like what's the correct way of doing different patterns. Yes. Um, and I can easily can see that being a good source of discussion during code reviews yeah. for different functional patterns of, of programming. Yes, that will be interesting. Well, you also have to extend the standards you have. So we usually have a wiki page explaining uh, how you should write our code. Mm -hmm. So we definitely need to extend that to Lambda style. Cool. OK, so it's been fun chatting with you. Yes, thanks um, a lot for inviting me. Look forward to your session later on about the code review. No, it was yesterday. Oh, well. And it was in German, <laughs> so <laughs> you couldn't understand it anyway. All right, so it's a good thing we're interviewing yes, you now, so yes, I can learn a little bit. Yes, I'll <laughs> probably do it in English later on uh, this year cool. on another conference. Yeah, submit to Java 1. <laughs> yeah, I probably will still have to think about if I have time for that. 
Cool. All right. Thanks very much, and enjoy the rest of the Javelin conference. Yes. Thank you.